2016 has come to a close. 2016, I am going to call the transitional year. It was definitely a year where I discovered a lot about myself. I discovered things that are important to me, things that are not so important to me. I left things that weren't benefiting me. I gained things that had benefited me greatly. I went through things that were very difficult, things that I didn't expect to ever have to go through. But I, I will never be the person that will say one year was the worst or was bad because I truly feel like with each year there are lessons that we learn and even if there is one huge awful thing that happened to you, there are a hundred million different little things including 365 days of just waking up and being blessed to open our eyes and breathe the air and just have another day of life. 2016 started most notably with um, my attendance to the Tony Robbins Unleash Your Power Within event. I went with my father-in-law and two of my sister-in-laws and that was just kind of, I wanna say it was a life-changing event. Um, I don't, it, it's weird because the year before 2015, I spent that entire year kind of discovering myself and just getting more in touch with who I am and what I believe. And I wasn't really looking forward to, I wasn't expecting to, I guess I should say, get a whole lot out of that event. And I got more than I could have ever dreamed of. It was four days, I think it was, of you know, really getting down to the root of who you are, what makes you who you are, the experiences that you've, you know, you've experienced in life and how that affects who you are as an adult. It just, it's, it was a great time of reflection. It was a time where I found truly what my purpose is and for the first time in my life, I really laid out what I want my life to look like at the end of my life. I think that was the start of 2016 being a learning and transitional year because I just got real with myself and it helped me move forward with things that maybe I had been putting off for a long time. One of those things that I put off for a long time, which actually ended up probably being the biggest transition in 2016 is that I walked away from actively being a Beachbody coach. I still have my coaching account, I still help people, I still use the product, but going to the Tony Robbins event pushed me to leave that business. I had always said during Beachbody coaching that I was passionate about it and I loved doing it and I believed in the company, but that at the end of the day, I didn't want to be known as Terra Creole Beachbody Coach. I wanted to use Beachbody Coaching as a platform to create my own platform to help and inspire people. Um, and I just realized that I was putting so much time into a business that, yes, I loved and I was passionate about and I got so much out of it but it wasn't aligning with the end goal. Now I'm doing what I want. I'm taking control of my channel and my blog and helping people in the community. And I just, I feel so much better that I'm still doing things that I'm passionate about, but I'm doing it on my own terms. So that was a huge, huge realization in 2016 and a really big deal for me to leave a company that I had been working so fiercely and passionately with since 2012, so for years. To kind of transition from leaving Beachbody, part of the reason I was doing Beachbody kind of half-assed was because I was dealing with my injuries, my neck and back injuries. And I spent 2016 dealing with it the entire year, which I would say is definitely the maybe one of the biggest cons of 2016. I was in the chiropractor's office getting adjustments and massages twice a week for pretty much the entire year, buying things, buying tools and programs to try and correct the problem. And it was difficult because I've kind of, since I got back into fitness, my identity has kind of been fitness and sharing that journey and taking care of myself and my body and my physical form and my health. And I discovered this year that I'm not gonna get better by continuing to do the things I was doing. It was difficult, but it really taught me how to take care of me. For the first time in my life, I started doing things for me 
and not feeling guilty about the finances that are associated with it or the time that was associated with it or telling people no. So I would say in 2016, although my health struggle, my, my fitness, my body struggles, my injury struggles were a major con, discovering myself and taking care of myself was a major plus. I basically just started taking care of me in the big ways and the smallest of ways. Ways that maybe some people would look in and think, oh, she's getting her nails done. That's no big deal, a normal person does that. But for me, it was about taking that time for myself. 2016, like I mentioned before, just the year of realization. I had a realization, I believe it was the beginning of this year, maybe towards the end of last year, that I am a minimalist, <laughs> which you guys have seen the videos and read the blog posts. It's nothing new at this point, but before that point, I had always just thought that I was like crazy OCD about things being clean and organized, and I couldn't understand why nothing ever felt like enough. And then at Tony Robbins, again, I just realized that I have no desire to feel settled. At the end of my life, I don't want to say I have a nice house and a nice yard and I just don't, I don't care about that. Right now I want my kids to be settled, I want them to be in one space, but when they're off and being their own people and off doing their thing in the world, I just want to kind of go. And that helped me to realize that my home, it wasn't just about being clean and being neat, it was that I don't feel like I need any of this stuff. If I didn't have a family, I wouldn't have 95% of what I have. And once I did that, I realized that there aren't a whole lot of minimalists online that have a family, that have young kids and a husband. So I really made it a point to start sharing my minimalism journey, how I do it with people that maybe necessarily aren't minimalist and how I do it taking care of my family and traveling and just really focusing on the things that bring us so much value and so much passion in our lives. Veganism, that's another thing that I took on in 2016 that I, you know, I announced to you guys and I really kind of went all in. The thing about me when I make up my mind, when I decide I'm gonna do something, I can't do it halfway, I just can't. So when I decided that I was gonna be vegan or I was gonna switch to a plant-based diet, I really went all in. For years leading up to 2016, in fact, my whole life, I knew that these foods did not make me feel good and that I did not enjoy eating them. I've never liked meat. I've told you guys this a million times. I knew that was the case and yet I was so fearful of making that switch. I was afraid it was gonna be difficult and maybe it wasn't going to be for me. But this year I made that switch and I don't wanna put labels on it. I really don't wanna like label myself a vegan. I just know that I'm eating in a way that is best for me and I'm eating a plant-based diet. I'm gonna do what I wanna do for the better of my health and the environment and that's what I chose to do in 2016 and I chose to do so in a way that I know with things like that you tend to get a lot of hate and a lot of people are very passionate about it and can come at you and come at you hard and I just chose that you know I made the decision that I didn't care because it was what worked for me and I'm you know I'm happy to say that my family surrounding me has started to make small changes they've started to cut out meat they've started to be more open to foods that maybe they thought originally weren't as satisfying as they actually are and it's been exciting to see my journey kind of spread out to the people surrounding me the people that i love it's nice when in the beginning people question you and they tease you and they challenge you and then you know months later they are willing to challenge themselves in a way this year well last year 2016 was the first year that i flew out of the country it was the first year that we traveled to Nicaragua and it was everything I ever imagined it to be. I've always made it clear on this channel that I feel like I have a, a wanderlust spirit and I don't feel like I just said earlier, I don't feel like I need to be settled and I had just always dreamed of traveling and I had never done it and this year we took our first trip to Nicaragua and we actually just took our second trip and my husband and I also this year went to Knoxville, Tennessee for the first time and that was kind of a big deal because I would say it was our first really like major vacation together. 
That was a really special trip for us and we really embraced it for what it was. We did not put any pressure on ourselves to explore and to go everywhere and figure out everything. We kind of just slept in, woke up, went to eat, came back to rest, take a nap, go out to eat again and experience the city for what it was. And I would say that was definitely one of the most refreshing times of the year. It really let us get away and experience things together and just be together without plans and, and family plans and kids and taking care of them. So that was a really special moment in the year for me and for my husband and I am so grateful for that time that we got together. One of the craziest things, and I, you know, I, I hate kind of rehashing it because there was a lot of hate and just nastiness surrounding it, but we had a litter of puppies, and that was part of what, me, what made me realize that Beachbody was taking more out of me than it was giving me. I had these nine beautiful, precious puppies, and anybody that has had one puppy knows it is exhausting at times. It can be really difficult. It can kind of push you to a breaking point because it's hard. It is hard and I had nine of them from day zero to nine weeks old. I had nine puppies and it was exhausting at times. It was so exhausting. There were days when I cried because I felt overwhelmed and I felt stressed and I felt tired, but I also felt at peace. It really gave me a lot of time to push everything else aside. I couldn't leave the house for more than an hour at a time, so I was here all the time. And it just gave me the time to sit down and really focus on that and drop everything else. And it became very clear to me the stuff that I missed and the stuff that I did not. The stuff that beforehand was causing me so much stress and during that period, it didn't matter. There was no need for that stuff. It was pointless. And then of course, there were a million other little things throughout the year that I loved and that taught me a lot. But one of the fun things that I did was I got a new tattoo. I have one tattoo, or I had one tattoo, um, and it just, you'd always, I had always heard that tattoos are addicting and the process is addicting and you'll want more, and I never had that experience. I had my one tattoo and I just really wasn't all that interested in getting another one. Um, and then one day I was like, you know what, I want a tattoo of an elephant. This is the one thing in my life that has stayed really constant. I've always loved elephants. I've always admired just their beauty and their grace and their loyalty. And I decided that 2016 and 2017 were going to be the years that I was going to use that passion to teach people about these beautiful animals and about the cruelty that they experience at the hands of us humans. Now I'm just so proud when every time I look in the mirror and I see that tattoo and it just reminds me of things that I'm so passionate about. I'm passionate about animals and traveling and just loyalty, loyalty to my family and loyalty to you guys and just it embodies everything I feel like that I'm passionate about. And so that was just a fun little way to end 2016. So like I said, 2016 is a year that I will never forget. It had the highest of highs and it had the lowest of lows and we came out happy and better and stronger and I've just never realized so much about myself and I didn't think that was possible after spending all of 2015 kind of really digging deep and learning about me but it just goes to show that you never stop learning, you never stop discovering, and the more you make it a purpose to learn about yourself, the more you are gonna learn, and the deeper that learning is gonna be, the more intentional you are gonna live your life, the purpose that you are going to fulfill. I am forever grateful for 2016, though like I said, there was some bad times, some really hard times, there was a lot of tears, it was, the year of transition and the year of growth. And I'm so grateful to you guys because it's through these videos, it's really obvious when I make a transition because my content kind of shifts gears and things change and I kind of step back for a while while I'm discovering and figuring it all out. And you guys have been forever loyal and I'm just so grateful and I'm excited to share more of these things in 2017. So, 
that's it. Uh, leave in the comments below something that happened to you in 2016. Maybe the thing that you enjoyed the most, the thing that made you the happiest, or something that broke your heart, something that was really hard, but you overcame it and now you are stronger. I want to hear it. I love you guys, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.